Yeah, Scott, I guess Amani, I want to ask you just what you continue to see in Amani and his development. He's he's had to go two weeks in a row for you. One week, you maybe didn't know it was going to happen until right for the game, and then maybe had a little bit more prep work this week. But how has he kind of handled that? How do you like his growth? Yeah, well, the good thing about Amani Jim is that he's always preparing like he's going to be, you know, starting. So it's not even a surprise, you know what I mean? So he was prepared, and, uh, you know, again – He's been able to do some good things, getting his hand on some balls and, uh, you know, being good against the passing game and then also just keeping improving on the uh, against the run and, uh, you know, playing multiple positions for us and doing some things has been has been good. So, um, you know, like his preparation and just continue to, to make plays uh, when he has the opportunity to. And KB has talked a lot about maybe interceptions, hopefully coming in bunches. He gets his first one on Sunday, you, you and him. And I guess everybody hoping that's maybe a sign of things to come. Yeah, I mean, if you're asking if I'd like him to get a ton of interceptions here since he got his first one this season, I'm, I'm all for it, you know. But more importantly, I, I want him to, uh, you know, just continue to lead our defense, communicate, um, and, and do his job at a, at a uh, you know, extremely high level. And he does that, you know, I'm sure all the other stuff will, will, will come. And last for me, when, you, when you're preparing to face a guy like Aaron Rodgers, uh, these guys have all seen him play. You, you, you kind of know what you're going up against, but what are some of the things you have to be disciplined at? What are some of the key points going into facing him? Well, it's exciting. It's an exciting opportunity to be honest. And, you know, I know <clears throat> the guys in the DB room are, are looking forward to it. Um, you know, the uh, quarterback who's playing uh, at an elite level for a long time. And, uh, you know, so we're, we're looking forward to the opportunity to go up against them and to be able to, uh, you know, compete for, for 60 minutes or however much longer it is. But it's going to take, uh, you know, obviously great attention to detail, great preparation, and then, uh, you know, doing our job on Sunday. But, but it starts with the preparation that, that's already begun. John, I saw you jump in here. Do you have a question? Yes, yes, I do. Uh, sorry about that. Hi, Scott. Um, uh, you may have already been uh, asked uh, this on, on Bayard, um, but – you know, even though Kevin Byard, you know, has been around for, for years and has a great years and Pro Bowl and so forth, I wonder, you know, just getting that interception uh, the other day, can that kind of relax a guy, you know, given the fact that he had, you know, he talked a little bit about being frustrated that he hadn't been able to, to pick one off yet so far this year. Hey, John. Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, KB, again, I, I did mention it earlier, but, you know, we want him every play to be able to communicate and to do his job at a high level. And so, you know, sometimes those those interceptions just don't come your way for whatever reason. But, uh, you know, him being able to tackle, him being able to play man to man on these elite tight ends that we face week in and week out, um, you know, that that's what we work on. And then obviously when those opportunities do come that we get our hands on the ball, uh, you know, we want we want to make those plays. And I know Kevin, uh, you know, does a lot of extra stuff with ball skills and all that type of stuff. So he he wants that for himself and works hard to prepare for those opportunities. And, uh, you know, you saw that pay off the other day. But, uh, you know, so that answers your question. Sure. Yeah, I was going to ask you also, um, you know, with the Dory coming back, you know, the fact that, that he's got some experience in that secondary, I wonder if, if that can help Kevin uh, as well, you know, maybe not have to be concerned about as many things with a little bit more uh, experience around him there. Yeah, I mean, it's great to have a Dory back out there. Um, you know, there's been a comfort level that he's been out there with us for the past couple seasons. So it's always good to get a guy that, that does have that experience back out there. Um, and, you know, just looking forward to him to keep on uh, improving and to, uh, you know, be able to do his job on a play in play out basis. But yeah, I think there, there is definitely uh, a good feeling to, to have a Dory uh, uh, back out there and playing on Sundays. Gotcha. And one last one, if I could, uh, just on, on Imani, 
Um, you know, obviously I had to fill in for, for Kenny here a few weeks and seems to have held up pretty well for the most part. How have you seen him, uh, you know, improve this season? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously as rookie guys come in and, you know, throw a lot on their plate as a rookie. And sometimes, you know, Amani did a good job of, you know, taking it all in, but, you know, it's still just trying to do his job, you know, and really not worried about maybe the whole entire picture of our defense. And so, you know, taking that next step in the year two, uh, you know, trying to make sure that he can, you know, take command back there, communicate, get everybody lined up and really be the type of safety that we want to be. And so there's been improvement in that area. He can obviously still improve there. Um, there's been improvement in the ball production, um, which you can see in some of his opportunities that he's, he's gotten his hands on balls. Uh, but, you know, there's still some things we can improve there. And then obviously, you know, run game uh, coming in and, and, and tackling and, and being able to, uh, you know, do th things there in the run game. So, you know, there's definitely been improvement and, and there's still some things that, that we can obviously still improve and, and, and help him with and, and continue to develop his skill set. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, Buck. I apologize if, if uh, I've got a redundant one for you, Coach. I just jumped over. Um, no problem. Kevin Byard seemed to have one of his uh, one of his better games this season. I know Pro Football Focus grades aren't aren't everything, but uh, just by the numbers and and just kind of watching it back, looked like he held up really really soundly in coverage. What you kind of see from him uh, on Sunday? Yeah, I mean it 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 honestly was a combination of everything he did during the week, his preparation. Uh, prepared well to, uh, to, to play man coverage. He prepared well to communicate our defense and, and prepare well to, uh, to know what their offense was doing. And you could see that on, on Sunday. And that's no different than really what he does every week, Buck. You know, he's, he's consistently comes to work every day and, and does that stuff. I know, you know, getting the interception or everything, you know, everybody looks at that. But, you know, obviously he was able to play good man-to-man and, uh, you know, tackle well and, and communicate well. And he, he was also able to get his hands on, on some balls. So, Sorry, I didn't mean to no, interrupt no. you there. Um, how, from, as a safety, how much more, I guess, taxing is it to, to play in man coverage um, it, at that position? Or, and, and what kind of makes Bayer unique in, in his ability to hold up well in man coverage, or is, or is that something that makes him unique? Yeah, I think, you know, in today's NFL, there's a lot that safeties are needed to do, right? They're needed to, you know, be able to <clears throat> come up in the run game and, and tackle. But then there's, are, there are these tight ends that are coming from college that, you know, um, are playing a lot of detached football and these uh, passing – offenses in college and so they're half tight end half wide receiver and uh so now we're having to have to play these guys man to man and you can see that week in week out with the guys that we have to go up against and um you know just really proud of Kevin every week he takes on the challenge of 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 guarding these guys um and um you know just just takes it on every week and so it's definitely something that he works at all the time, along with Kenny, you know, Kenny also takes on that challenge of playing these, you know, tight ends, man to man, being in the box, all that type of stuff. So, um, you know, guys just continually prepare to do that. These man to man tight ends, these tight ends that are detached and all that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, they prepare every week and, and, you know, hopefully we'll continue to be able to be successful against them. Maybe maybe it's just because they're asked to do so much. The tight ends are in 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 the modern day NFL, but it seems like that position, in particular, there's been such a crazy evolution with the kind of athletes that are playing there. Is has that kind of been your observation over the, the the course of your time in the league, or or is it just you know this is there's one every week that we see. We just gotta we just gotta match up with them as it comes. Yeah, Buck, I actually have an interesting perspective on that because I coached tight ends uh, in college for, for seven seasons. So, yeah, definitely there's been a big evolution in the tight end, uh, you know, from college. And then that's obviously gone up to the NFL. You know, 12, 15 years ago, that guy had his hand in the ground, you know, 85 percent of the game um, on third down, may bring in another wide receiver. So you're in a different personnel group. But nowadays, you know, these tight ends are flexed. They're in line. 
They're moving around. Um, they're doing just about everything. Shoot, they're taking handoffs, right? Hawkinson took a handoff on Jet Sweep last week. So, um, so yeah, you're absolutely right. The evolution of the tight end has changed drastically. And so it's made us as safeties have to uh, be able to defend these guys and, and to be able to defend a skill set that, that, you know, um, is, is very diverse. And so we have to be able to be diverse and we have to be able to, you know, uh, study them throughout the week and, and try and do the best we can on, them on a weekly basis. Thanks very much, coach. Coach, it's Robbie. I've got one random one for you. Just trying to remember the timelines. Did you and LaFleur cross over at Notre Dame and were you on the offensive side of the ball at that point? Yes. He was the quarterback's coach in 2014. I was the tight ends coach in 2014. So, um, uh, Fun to think about going up against him this week. Uh, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Rob? Fun to think about going up against him this week. Small little fraternity. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, um, I'm happy for his success. Um, you know, I've known him, like you say, for for a little while now and been on two staffs with him. But until you ask that question, honestly, it's the first time I thought about, you know, going to go up against him per se. You know, I've been obviously more focused on, uh, you know, the tight end, Tanyan, and the running back and number 17, Devontae Adams, and obviously number 12, Aaron Rodgers. So, um, but but happy that he was able to get this opportunity. And, uh, you know, like I said, I've known him for a little bit now. 